Hey, this is Professor Faye with your anatomy lesson of the day. Today we're going to talk about the vertebral column. So I have a little skeleton here to just show you a very basic look at the vertebral column. So here's the vertebral column. It's on the posterior aspect of our body. It articulates with the skull, with the ribs, and then with the pelvis. And there are seven cervical vertebrae up in our neck, 12 thoracic where we have our ribs attaching, and then five lumbar. A good way to remember those numbers might be the times of day that you could eat. 7 a.m., 12 p.m., 5 p.m. And then there are about five fused vertebrae that make up the sacrum and about four that make up the coccyx. All right, so we're gonna tell you a little bit more about each vertebra from the cervical, thoracic, and lumbar spine. So here's a look at a cervical vertebra. All right, I think if you look at it this way, it looks a little bit like a mouse. So there's the nose and the face and the ears, all right? Uh, if you don't like that, cervical vertebrae also have three holes, which is, which is a unique thing for them. There's a vertebral foramen and then two transverse foramen. Then there's a thoracic vertebra, which I'll rotate a little bit so you can get a sense of it. That thoracic vertebra, I think it looks like a giraffe. There's the face, the snout, the ears, and the horns. And then there's a lumbar vertebra which looks like this. I think that one looks like a moose. So there's the, uh, the moose with its kind of like big face and then its bugling nose and then its antlers and its ears, okay? So cervical, thoracic, and lumbar vertebrae. Now if we stack them on top of each other, you can note the size difference. The cervical vertebra is smaller than the thoracic and the lumbar. Um, it has to support less weight, so it doesn't have to be quite as big. If we look at the general features of a vertebra, uh, we can see that there's a body, which is this big chunky thing. This makes up the anterior portion of the vertebral column, and there are little uh, fibrocartilaginous discs here that are called intervertebral discs that go in between each uh, bone of the spine, each vertebra of the spine. Uh, in the middle, there's the vertebral foramen, and then there are these processes that extend laterally off of it called the transverse foramen. There are these ones that extend superiorly called the superior articular processes. And then there is this pointy one that you can feel if you run your hand up and down your spine, that's the spinous process. I have this vertebra set up with a couple letters on it. You can see the P and the L. So the P is for the pedicle, which is the little bridge of bone that connects the body to the transverse process of the, of the vertebra. And then over here is the L, which is the lamina, which connects the transverse process to the spinous process of the vertebra. So you can see that there's the L and the P. I remember that the body of the vertebra has the pedicle attached because ped, like pedestrian, um, you know, meaning we kind of walk with our feet across the street. So our feet attach to the body. Not quite anatomically accurate, but it's a good memory trick for me. Uh, so then there are ribs. Um, the ribs also attach to the thoracic vertebrae. And so the rib has a head, a neck, and a tubercle. That tubercle is kind of a bump of bone. The neck is a little bit um, constricted, and the head's a little bit wider. So the head of the rib attaches to the body of the vertebra too. So we have heads and feet attaching to the body of the vertebrae. So it attaches something like that. So there's the head attaching to the body and the tubercle attaching to the uh, transverse process. So the tubercle of the rib, which is a T word, attaches to the transverse process of the vertebra, which is another T word. So that's a good way to remember that those go together. Uh, where the ribs attach to the vertebrae, it's tough to see on this particular um, model, but they can rub little flat spots into the vertebrae called facets. And so you might be able to see facets or demi-facets at uh, on thoracic vertebrae because of that rib articulation. That's it for the vertebral column.